Hello and welcome back to the Crafty Corner. I'm Jana and I'm here to tell you about the new theme over at the Funky Junkie Inspiration Avenue Challenge Blog. So this week we're creating to the theme of Spring Frolic and this couldn't be any better for timing. We've just got in the brand new Tim Holtz Ideology line and it is so good. There are so many wonderful goodies and treasures in there. This is going to be an absolute delight to make with. So if you'd like to see which materials I'm going to be using for this week's project, go ahead and pause here. All right, let's head over to the crafty corner. Before we dive into today's project, let's take a quick look at some of the new ideology goodies. These are the latest SKUs from Ideology and I cannot wait to start creating with them. The tricky part is narrowing it down to just a few choices for this week's Spring Frolic project. Okay, let's get crafting. Since our theme is Spring Frolic, I wanted to do a spring theme vignette. And what better way to do that than with the brand new Tim Holtz Reliquary Dome. This thing is so cool. The shape is absolutely amazing. And there's so much space in here to build with. This is going to be really neat. Now, my jumping off point was one of the large transparent pieces. Whenever I'm going about building a vignette, I try to pick one large focal point or a starting point that I can then base the rest of my build off of. While looking through all of the different pieces, the transparent pieces really caught my eye. This one in particular, I think is really, really cool. And this is definitely giving us our spring vibe. We've got the beautiful flower, we've got our butterfly, and plenty of green leaves. So what we're going to be doing with this, it's going to be acting as our primary backdrop. I'm going to be sliding it in here and we're going to be building an entire scene around this. So the plan is to slip that in and it's going to end up looking something like, like this. But we're definitely going to trim a little bit off the back. As you can see, there's a bit of hang over, but I think if we play with that just a little bit, it's going to rest quite nicely. But that is our jumping off point. Now I'm going to set this aside for the time being, and we're going to be focusing on the base. Now for the base, we're going to be building this up and creating kind of a mossy knoll to place our pieces on. And to do that, well, I have got these fun moss chunks that I got from Amazon and we're going to be busting these up to create a hillside. But I don't want to just use the moss, I'd like to have a little bit more height and dimension to the build. So what I'm going to be doing is bringing in some tin foil and we're going to be using that and crumpling it up to create our hill. Also, by using the tinfoil as a base, it's going to allow me to poke in different elements once we have built our base up. So first, let's go ahead and squish this up and attach it to our base, and then we can start building over the top with some moss. All right, this part's going to be a little bit noisy, so I will try to mute the volume a little bit here. Okay, so using the tinfoil, just going to kind of move that around. And get our little hillside. Yeah, I think something like that is pretty good. I might want a little bit more foil in the front. That should be easy. I've got a whole roll of this stuff to work with. So I'm going to grab one more piece and we'll add that right down here. Okay, so we've got more foil and again, I'll just crumple that up. And let's see, kind of want to just add that along the front. 
I'm gonna try to press that down a little bit more because I'm really going for some dimension here. Ooh, let's see. I kind of want this side to be a little bit flatter. That side to come up a bit more. Okay. I am thinking this should be a good foundation to work with. Let's just make sure that the dome still fits over the top. Let's turn this. Oh, got that going the wrong way up. That should be okay. Let's see here. That looks good. We'll make sure that part is a little bit more down. Good. All right, let's see how the dome fits. Yep, that'll be fine. Now I'm going to go in with some hot glue and we're going to glue this down to our base. Okay, so I've got my hot glue gun. This is a Sure Bonder. Found this on Amazon and I really like this model. It's been working quite well for me. So just taking the hot glue, we're going to use that to stick down the tin foil. And I'll do the same thing over here. I'm going to add a little bit of glue there and then some more on the smaller piece. And we'll just stick that together and press that in. And that should set up quite nicely for our foundation. So the next part is going to be to add some moss. And for the moss, we're going to be using collage medium over the top of the tin foil. I could use hot glue, but I want to make sure that I will have the option of pressing things into the foil. I believe if we use the hot glue that we won't be able to place objects as easily. So I'm just going to go in. I've got some collage medium right here. And we're just going to spread that all around on the tin foil, and we're going to be breaking up the mossy bits. So just like that, and I'm going to go into my finger and smear that around. Yep. Just like that, and then we're going to go in and start placing the moss. So I'm going to go ahead and put this next part on fast forward. We're going to change the camera angle so that we can have a better view for this next step. Here is the completed base. We've got a couple of little gaps, but those are going to get covered up once we start adding our pieces. But all in all, I'm feeling pretty good about this. We've got our little mossy knoll. Now we need to add some embellishments. So for embellishments, we're going to be pulling in a variety of ideology products. We've got some new ones and some old ones. So we're going to be mixing and matching. For the first thing that we're going to be altering, we're going to alter these nifty little toadstool mushroom things. So I'm going to take those and we're going to be altering these with some alcohol inks. For the alcohol inks, we're going to be using terracotta and latte. I'm going to start with the terracotta first and I'm going to be applying that with one of the Ranger alcohol ink brushes. I'm also going to pull in a little bit of the isopropyl alcohol just to make sure that our colors don't dry out and that we'll have plenty of time to paint. So I'm just going to drop a few drops of this right onto the media mat. Just like that. And I'm going to add just a dash of the isopropyl right here. Good. And we're going to take a mushroom, I'm going to take some of that color and we're going to just brush that on. And that color looks really good. I may do one or two layers. We will see after we get the color on here. But I'm liking this. It's a very rustic wilderness type of look. I'm trying to go for kind of not really realistic mushrooms, but uh, not fantastical, I guess. Somewhere in between. Yeah, I'm really liking the color on this. That is great. Hmm. 
Uh, this is just going to be the first part. After we finish applying the alcohol inks, then I'm going to go in with some distress paint and maybe a dash of distress crayon to add a few accents to these. Okay, that is good. I think I do want to do a second layer. Yeah, I want that reddish orange to be fairly vibrant. That's good. Okay. And this one. All right. I think I'm pretty happy with these. So I'm going to let those dry for a moment, and then we're going to go in and add some latte. So I'm just wiping off the brush with a cloth, wiping up the extra alcohol ink, and we'll drip some of the latte onto the mat as well. That's good. And just a small little dash of rubbing alcohol. Good. So we'll take this large mushroom first. And I want to add that to the stem. Oh, that is just what I was going for. Pretty happy with that color as well. Okay. All right, now let's look at the little ones. I didn't need to change the color a lot for the stems, but I just wanted to make it a little bit more earthy. It's got a really natural tan look, just as they are, but I want to darken it up just a bit. Okay. Pretty good. All right. I don't need to do too much to those. Those look great already. So now we're going to add a little bit of Distress Crayon over the top. For Distress Crayon, we're going to be using a dash of Vintage Photo. So I just want to try to hit some of these raised bumps. Just add a little bit of grunge to this. Maybe a little bit on the sides. I'm just going to kind of flick that on. Then I'll go in and smudge that with my fingers. Okay, so looking at that, that is giving us some good coverage, and we're just going to smudge that out. Yeah, I like that quite a bit. Cool. A little bit more smudge here. Huh, you know, I don't think I do want to add any white spots or anything. I like this quite a bit as is. All right, let's grunge the other two up just a little bit. I'm going to leave the stems as is. I think those already look really good, but I wanted to catch some of the raised parts on the mushrooms. Okay, smudge that in with fingers. Yeah, that is working out really, really well. And adding a bit of distress crayon on this one, smudging it out. Ooh, not bad. Okay, I would call those mushrooms complete. So let's take a closer look at these. These have been altered with alcohol inks, terracotta, and latte, and then a dash of vintage photo distress crayon. All right, let's go ahead and set those finished embellishments aside. Next, we're going to be pulling in one of the new SKUs from this year's Tim Holtz Ideology. And that is going to be Dormant foliage. These little pieces are fantastic and I wanted to grab two of them to add to our display dome. I think that and that one. Okay. Just need the two pieces. And to alter these, we're going to be going in with some foundry wax. So we've got foundry wax gilded. I'm just going to give that a really good shake to make sure everything is getting incorporated. All right, let's go ahead and drop a bit of that right onto the media mat. Just a few drops like that should be plenty. Okay, that looks pretty good. So I've got some of the foundry wax right here, and we're going to go ahead and paint that right onto the embellishment. There. Just going to tap that. Okay, and alter this one. 
turning that, and just finishing that off. Okay. Good. So these have quite a bit of foundry wax on them, and I do not want to be picking these up with my fingers. That could get very hot and uncomfortable pretty quickly. So what I am going to do is go in with the Tim Holtz squeezers, and we're going to lift it up that way, I hope. Yep, there we go. Okay, just move that aside, and I'm going to quickly wipe this off. Now, we're going to be going in with the embossing heat tool. So, let's go ahead and put that part and fast forward and watch the magic of Distress Foundry Wax. Here are the altered adornment foliage pieces. And just look how shiny that is. That looks really nice. But I'd like to bring out the detail and the texture on these pieces, so we're going to add a little bit of Distress Crayon over the top. I'm going to smoosh that around and make this look a little bit more vintagey. Okay. Much better. That is the look that I was going for. All right, let's go ahead and do the same thing with the other piece. Taking the leaves, scribbling down the Distress Crayon, and smooshing it in. The Distress Crayon really helps all those little details pop just a little bit more. Okay, very happy with those. Now, on to the next part. We have got some of the Tim Holtz Ideology flowers. These are from an older SKU, but they are a wonderful little nod to spring. And better yet, these are customizable and we can add some distressed spray stains to give us a little bit of color and, in this case, shine. Because we're going to be pulling in some of the Distress Mica spray stains. The colors that I'm going to be using include Winterberry, and we're going to go for a bright yellow color, Harvest Moon. So with the mica sprays, as always, we need to give these a good shake so that we get all that sediment, which is where the mica has settled, reincorporated into the spray. All right, much better. So very simply, we just take this, I spritz it with a little bit of water, and then we hit it with a small blast of color. Let's do the yellow first with Harvest Moon. Okay. But very simply, we're just smooshing that around, making sure that the color ends up in the flower. We'll go in, a little bit more water. I'm just going to kind of mop that around, make sure that all the flowers have got some color on it. Okay. Great. And I'll set these aside. I will dry those with the Ranger Heat Tool in a little bit, but let's go ahead and alter the second bunch of flowers first. So, again, we're taking the flowers, setting them down in the middle, a couple of sprays with the Distress Sprayer, and a couple shots of color. There we go. And again, smush it. Make sure we have all that wonderful color on the flowers. And we'll give that a second spritz. There we go. So here is our second batch of altered flowers and those look just like spring. Okay, we'll be back in a moment after I have dried these off. Here are the completed flowers. These are all nice and dry and ready to be cut up and placed into the reliquary dome. 
Next, we're going to be altering some of the new Tim Holtz organic layers. These are absolutely fantastic. I love these little leaf pieces and these will add a nice contrast into our background. So we're going to be altering those with a bit of vintage photo distress ink. As always, we've got our mini blending tool and some dome foam. So let's get some ink onto the foam and give these leaves just a little bit of grunge. I just wanna go around the edges, get rid of that white line and just add a little bit more of a vintage finish and you know what what the heck we're here i'm going to take care of the back at the same time it probably won't be visible but i want to make sure all of my white edges are covered okay pretty good and we're just going to do the same thing to all of our leaves so i'm just going to Spread that right over the top, flip it over, and get the back at the same time. Mm. That's good. This is a nice layer of thickness for the stiff cardstock like paper. That will be really good for adding details. All right, and last leaf, taking that and smooshing that out. All right, these are nice and covered. Now I'm also going to be pulling in some elements from this pack as well. This is the Tim Holtz Ephemera Pack palette, and there were so many goodies in here, it was really hard to narrow it down to just a few pieces. So from there, I am going to be bringing in this piece here and this right here. I'm not entirely sure if I'm going to use the handle with care. I'd really like to, but we're just going to have to see how things line up. All right, but I've got the edges inked on that just in case. And now I want to do the same thing with these little ticket pieces. These are neat. Absolutely love it. All right, so this one I just want to do a little bit of distress around the edges. Good. All right, now that I've got those altered, I want to add a little bit more to these. So since these are going into our vignette scene, I want to make things a bit easier for myself when adding these in. There aren't really any surfaces that I can glue these to, but since we use the tin foil to form our base, I can poke pieces into the tin foil. But to do that, I'm going to be using some wire. So we're just gonna take some wire. I'm going to cut three pieces. I'm gonna cut them a little bit long. Longer is gonna be better than shorter. And we're going to glue those to the backs of the leaf pieces. And then I can adjust the height and length of these when we add them directly into the dome. And to attach these, we're going to be using some hot glue. So we're gonna bring the hot glue gun back and I'm going to be running a line of glue across the back of this, just a very thin line. All right, let's see. Just like that, Whoop, that's a little bit much, but I can probably thin that out along the back of the leaf. Now we'll take the wire. I'm going to have that follow leaf just place that right into the glue and we'll let that sit and harden so we're going to do the same thing for the other three leaves just taking the glue running that down the leaf back onto the stem and adding in a piece of wire I'm just going to gently curve the wire so that it matches the contour of the leaf good and that's gonna be nice and easy to add into the display dome. All right, one more leaf to go. We'll take this, add our glue. Just one nice thin line down the leaf, and we'll take our wire. So I'm just taking the wire, giving it a slight bend, and placing it right onto the leaf. There. All right, and we'll set that aside. Now I've got two more pieces that I want to add the wire to. So the main focal point in this dome 
is going to be one of the transparent pieces. We've got these really fun transparent things too pieces and inside there I found this really pretty bird. That is going to be our main focal point. He's going to need a little wire to twine around and then we also have this paint swatch. I absolutely love that. But I'm going to be pairing the paint swatch with the ephemera piece that we have already altered. I'm just paper clipping those two things together and I'm going to take a small dot of glue to make sure that these two elements are staying together. But we're also going to be adding a wire on the back. I wanted to add the wire because I kind of like this to be poking into the ground like kind of like a sign. So we're going to grab another piece of wire and we'll take the hot glue and run another line. Let's see, I think about here. Just run that down on this. Good. Right, setting the hot glue gun aside, making sure that our wire is nice and straight. We'll just place that here. Okay. Now let's add that piece of wire for the bird as well. This I'm planning on wrapping around a tree branch to help the bird stand upright. And for the branch, I salvaged a stick from the great outdoors. I know that we've all been into sticks <laughs> in the last year and I will link my stick video in this video as well. Sometime last year during the winter time, we went on our own stick gathering adventure in the great outdoors. So for details for that, I will leave a link down in the description box. But for right now, let's go ahead and add the wire to our bird. So we're just going to put that right along here. Don't need a lot of glue, just a little to give the wire a spot to land. I'm going to try to line that up so it's hidden behind the bird's leg. straightening that wire out and placing that down. Okay, now that we have all of our elements put together, it's time to start the assembly process. So in just a moment, we're going to readjust the camera and see how this dome fits all together. Here is our base piece. Let's go ahead and start adding our elements. So first things first, I wanted to add this in and we're just going to poke that wire into our base. There. That should fit very nicely. All right, let me just readjust the camera angle a little bit. There. Now we are in frame. And I'm just going to double check that this still fits with the dome. Yes, not bad. But I'm going to try to push that down just a little bit more. Yep, there. So, just double checking the dome. And we are good. All right, next we're going to add in our leaves. Just gonna kind of poke these in at an angle, just like that. That's pretty good. All right, this one I want to go low. So we're just going to trim off some of the wire. Let's see, I think I could put that one here. Okay. Yep, not bad. Okay. Now I want to add in the mushrooms. We'll make sure that we've still got plenty of space. So for the mushrooms, I'm going to be attaching those with hot glue. So we're just putting some glue on the base. And we're going to stick that right in. All right, I'm just going to hold that for a little bit and hope that everything settles up nicely. 
think that's going to be good. I'm just going to press. Okay. And I want to add in the little ones as well, but I want to make these a bit shorter. Okay. That's tipping a little bit. I'm just going to set that sprayer right here to give this a little support while the glue sets up. Now, the mushrooms here are just a little bit too big, so I'm going to try to cut these down. I'm not really sure how that's going to cut, but I'm trying wire cutters first, so. Oh, that cut off really nicely. All right, and we'll do the same thing with the other one. Let's see. I want that one to be just a little bit shorter, so. Okay. And again, we will add a little bit of hot glue, and then we will stick that down on our chosen spot. I think I'll put that one just at a little bit of an angle. That's good. If I push, hopefully that'll leave a little bit of an indent. Good. That doesn't really want to stay, but maybe I can add a little bit of glue and I can go back in with a bit more moss to try to camouflage that glue spot. There, that's better. All right, now let's double check Ooh. with the dome that we're still good. Yeah, everything looks okay so far. And we'll go ahead and add that last mushroom in. Oh, that one is just going to be a bit. Let's try adding a little bit more hot glue there. Maybe the, yep, there we go. Now we've got some stability. All right, so let's take this one. And that's going to go right over here. Ah, there are glue strands everywhere, but we can clean those up just using the heat tool. Now I want to add in our branch. Let's see. Let's turn that like this. I'm going to snip the branch just a little bit shorter. It's a bit big. So if we just cut there. Okay, that should work really well. I'm going to put the branch right here and we'll add the bird. Let's see which angle. That's good. Okay. Let's take that. Stick that down. Now my plan for the bird is that it's going to go right here. I'm just going to twist that wire a couple of times around the branch to get them to stay. All right. That's good. And we'll just snip off the extra wire with the wire cutters. I'll just press that little wire piece underneath. Good, and we have our bird right here. All right, let's see, stick placement. Oh, if I place that right there, that should be great. All right, and the last bit of hot glue. Get that stick stuck in. Okay, backing up for two moments, I realized as I was sealing up the dome that I missed a couple of embellishments. So we're just taking a step back and adding in the beautiful little flowers that we had altered earlier. These are too good not to add to our spring fling scene. And we also have some gilded roses as well and our little foliage adornments. So let's go ahead and add these in quickly and then we'll seal up the dome again before we move to that finishing step of adding the gate pieces. These pieces were just too good not to add in, so we're just quickly re rewinding and putting in those little extras. All right, 
So I'm just going to take the flowers and I'm just going to poke them in here and there. And that's going to add a lovely pop of color to our creation. And for adhesive, I am using some of the Collage Medium. This is a nice, easy glue to use, has a pretty quick drying time, and will adhere metal, plastic, and porous objects to creations. So that is why it is one of my number one adhesive choices. <music> We are going to have a quick backtrack in time as I wrap the base of the dome and add the transparency in the background. It was just a tad too long, but I think if we take roughly a quarter of an inch, we should be okay. Okay, let's try adding the dome piece back on again. I'm going to place our backdrop here going to fit the dome over the top, making sure that we're not bumping any of our pieces out of the way. Okay. Ah, some of the moss is shifting again. Poke that back through. Good. Now I am very happy with this. Okay. Are we good? I hope so. Bring that edge up. Oh, that's interesting. Some of the moss pieces got very, very crumbly after I added some heat with the heat tool trying to get rid of the glue strands. Interesting. Okay. Now, let me readjust the camera. All right. I am really happy with the way this is looking. Mm. Okay, just doing a quick check around the back. Oh, taking off that little bit of extra moss. All right, so the last couple of things that we're going to be doing will be to one, add some ribbon around the base. That's going to give us a little bit of camouflage for that edge and the moss that's coming out. We're going to be using some of the Ideology Velvet Trim. And for this, we're going to be using the dark green ribbon. So I'm just going to take that, I'm going to give this a rough measurement, let's see. That's going to look good. All right, I just want to make sure we've got enough. I'm going to take that, wrap this all the way around. Okay, pretty good. Put that there. And the other thing that we're going to do is I'm going to be adding one of these little word tags. And we are going to be using story. So I'm just gonna quickly open this, pull out that one tag, and set the rest of the pack aside. So for this, I want to go in with a little bit of picket fence, and we're just going to Try to highlight that one word. So one little drop of paint. And I'm just going to rub that in with my fingers and then rub off the excess with a cloth. Kind of going for a worn paint look with this. There. That's what I was going for. Okay. Now I need to find some twine to wrap around this and we'll be able to move on to the next step.
Okay, now we're just going to add a bead of hot glue all the way around the dome. I'm going to start in the front and then we'll stick the ribbon on. Okay, just like that. Oh. And then we'll just slowly work our way all the way around until we have the velvet trim attached. Okay. So we're just going to keep working our way around. It's going to be a little bit slow. I don't want to rush this part. Just taking that and wrapping it. And I'm going to be doing a second layer with some twine in a bit. But right now I just want to get that ribbon on so that we can camouflage the seam between the glass and the base. Okay, that looks good. And the last bit on the side. Take that. Okay, now I just want to snip off that little piece here. Okay. Good. Now the last thing I'm going to do is wrap some twine around the base and attach that little metal piece. Okay. So I'm just going to stick that on here. I'm going to tie that off. And then we'll just wrap the twine around the base. All right. That looks good. We've got our twine pre-cut, so I'm just going to take this, I'm going to place that right here, and I'm just going to twine this around. Sticking that there, turning this, and adding a dash to the back of that little word tag. And we're going to place that right here. That looks really cool. All right, there is one last thing I would like to do. And I was just poking through my ideology stash when I came across an older set that I haven't used. I've been saving it for something special. Well, I think this is a good time to use it. This is the metal gate, and this is one of the older ideology pieces. So we're going to take these gates, and I'm hoping I can bend these by hand and wrap this around the dome. So I'm thinking I'd like to put that on here and just gently curve that around. If I can get this to curve, it's going to look really, really awesome. Okay, so, so far so good. I just need to bend that just a little bit more on here. I'm trying to be really gentle with this because I'm wondering if the gate pieces might end up snapping off in my hand. And I'd rather they stay in one piece. Oh, look at that. That is going to work. Okay, really excited about that. Now we're going to do the same thing with this piece. I'm going to just gently work that with my hand and get that curve. It's getting that last little bit on the edge that is just a bit tricky. Oh, almost there. 
because like that, that just adds this really cool look. Okay. That is neat. All right. I think I'm pretty happy with this. So the only question is, how am I attaching it? <laughs> Let's see. I think that's going to be another hot glue attachment. Okay, much, much better. We've reassembled the base, our twine's back in place, so is the velvet trim, and we now have the flowers in there. Definitely worth it to take that step back and to rework it. All right, so last step. We're now going to be adding in these fantastic gate pieces, and this is just going to wrap around the dome like this. We bent these just using our fingers, and now let's attach these finishing touches. So. I'm just going to be running a fairly thick line of hot glue around the base of this fence piece and we're going to carefully stick that onto our dome. And I'm just going to hold that in place while that sets up. If I hold this here, we should be able to add hot glue around the edges and get this to stay in place. I'm not so thrilled about this being this close to my fingers, but I think this is the best way to get the gate to stick. It's going to be a little messy, but you know what? That's okay. Okay. So I've got that. I'm going to let that sit for just a little bit. I'm just going to hold that in place, let the hot glue do its thing. All right, let's go ahead and attach that last gate piece. So we're going to run a very thick line of glue around this. Okay, and we'll just bring that in gently. That's a bit more gloopy than I was wanting, but you know what? We'll make it work. Okay, so we've got the gate attached, but I ended up with a ton of glue ooze. But not a big deal. We're going to go in with some collage medium and camouflage that with a little bit more moss. I also decided to relocate the word tag. So let's add the moss first and then we can go back and add the little story tag. So I'm just adding bits of collage medium in between the little chunks of the gate. And we're going to take very small pieces of moss and just poke that in and around the fence. So just little bits. And that should look pretty good. I'm going to use this little tool. Well, it's a the Sizzix die pick to just make sure the moss stays in place. Okay, the last thing I'm going to do is go in with that little story tag and tie that onto the fence. So I'm just going to try to thread this through. Hmm. Can I thread that through? Let's see. Yep, got it. Need to oh, almost had it. Oh, maybe I can stick this part through. Yep, that works. Okay. So I'm just gonna turn the tag and tie that off. Oh, why is the tag flipping? Hmm. Let's see. There. Good. So 
So that brings us to the end of this project. The reliquary dome was absolutely intriguing to work with. The shape of it is so unique and gives all sorts of possibilities with the amount of space under it to create a whole little scene. Okay, let's go ahead and take a closer look at the finished dome. Thank you so much for joining me here at the Crafty Corner today. This is the completed reliquary dome created to the theme of spring frolic. This has been such a fantastic project and I've greatly enjoyed exploring the new 2023 Tim Holtz ideology. Don't forget you too can join in the creative fun. Hashtag all of your creative makes at hashtag the funky junkie. We always look forward to seeing what you create too. And until next time, happy crafting.